Okay. This is the this is the guy that signed the Emancipation Proclamation. What? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Trivial Debates. KD the other day that was really fucking good. That was the one I had. It was fucking good. Spicy K- KD is really fucking good. That's a yeah, new one. You heard it first. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome well, to this week's edition of Trivial Debates. We have some awesome new debates this week. I am your host, Tim. Kermit the Frog. <laughs> is this is Kermit the Frog? Is that what this <laughs> is? I think it's this is Kermit the Frog. It's just team. Each right? week, <laughs> our panels will be judged on their scores and their arguments for facts, passion, and creativity. Our panelists this week are Dave Mater. I don't know who the fuck I am after all that <laughs> shit. Uh, I'm Benny Graves. I am also Dave Mater, aka Chris Seymour. Yeah. How the show works: there are six rounds plus a speed round. Our top <laughs> panelists will go to the speed round. The rounds are movies, television, music, sports. <laughs> History and the wild card. Our two top panelists will advance to the speed round. I think he's right, somewhat yeah. of an ethnic Kermit, but I don't know what ethnicity is. We want people to be passionate about their arguments, but not personally mean to one another, or as much as at least they can possibly be. Please subscribe to our iTunes feed or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, or Instagram. Whether you're listening on iTunes. Or watching the YouTube version. <laughs> All <laughs> and information can be found about this episode on our website, www.trivialdebates.com. Let the battle begin! Yeah, all right. That was Yay. fantastic. Awesome. That was, fa- that was fantastic. All right, I think we'll keep that take. That We're was ready. Was go. Good, was that That's better? a great introduction. It was, def- it was different. It was very different. <laughs> all right, so what question should we start with? Let's we got to start with movies. Are we not doing them in order? <gasps> There's a oh fucking God. order? Yes. <laughs> we didn't do Don't worry about the order. There's a new order. <laughs> yeah, I, it's I, the I, order I, of team. Okay, whatever. Just <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, really. I'm going to start with music. Oh, man. The music question for everybody is, what artist or band will still have a following 50 years from now? Let's start with Dave. Adele. She's young. Holy fuck. She's world famous. <laughs> she's British. She's she's loved across you know the world over. She's got some powerful pipes. <laughs> Men and women like her of every generation. And I see her uh, enduring well into her seventies and eighties. I think she's going to be a powerful star for many years to come. That's all you got. That's all, all right. I need. All right, Dave. That's not. That's <laughs> all right. Not let's hear <laughs> Benny. <laughs> uh, you know what? Benny's British, and I and there's a lot of good bands from. Britain, so like I, ho- I, I hope he picked something British. Like Adele? No. I picked Adele. She's well, British. Betty is shaking his head at that answer, and he's British. You don't think she'll have a following in 50 years? No, I don't think Adele will have a following. I think Adele, like, she, she is known for the Skyfall song. Actually, um, of course. She's known for many songs. You know what no. the one problem is? I don't know who Adele even is. You know, like um, the chick who sounds yeah, Dave, fucking Dave, horrible. Sing, when she's Dave, sing, sing, us, sing, one, an Adele sing us one Adele huh? song. Can you sing us an Adele song? Do it. Let's go. Um, <laughs> go on, Dave. Hit his yeah. roll, rolling yeah, you know, in the you deep. I heard that, that new one, like, hello from the other side. Like, I can sing you an Adele song, but okay, I'm not going to. Okay, you sing it. Uh, but, I'm not going to support your Dave, answer, Dave, though. Just, That's boring. Just, just sing a little Adele song that I should know so I know who she is. That's Don't horrible. Don't forget me. Is it based on my singing of is the that, song? No, 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 no that's, song. That's, a, that's not even a song that Tim would know. The only song you would know is like Skyfall. You know that one? Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to do that? Okay, in my let's ears? go to Betty. <laughs> <laughs> We're switching to Betty. Uh, fuck. Well, I'm, anyone who's got a following already. Well, you gotta go. You gotta go fifty years from now, though, Betty. It's not like who's already had a 50-year following. Well, yes, but if you've already had a 50-year following and people are still following you, then it's likely that you've just got that kind of sound that's, you know... What, like Elvis? Gonna, is you, that going to be gonna, around forever. You're going to have another 50 years. So who is your choice? Uh, I'll go with Mozart. Because it's, it's been more than, like, several hundred years. Yeah, or hasn't been, it? Maybe a hundred years or whatever. It's been a yeah, few yeah, centuries. Yeah, yeah. Motherfuckers are still banging, like, every single radio... Uh, every single... 
like country, their main <coughs> FM radio, they've always got a classical station. But who's actually following Mozart, Benny? To be honest, like is Dave following Mozart? Is Eamon? Is Tim? Am well, I? A- any are of the you? four people present it doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, no, none of us are following Mozart. None I do. of us I are. Do. I love, but, his, but love his work. I'm sure well, you play. Well, I'm, I'm sure currently I, following when you go into music not, class and you play band and orchestra, you play Mozart songs because you have to. It's not because it's like, oh, I love this song. Yeah, why do you have to? <laughs> why do you have to? It's because he's a, a classical music. What's writer. the most famous Mozart song? Like Ode to Joy? That's Beethoven. That's Beethoven. I so mean, I could go with Beethoven, to be fair. He's like more, you know, possibly even more famous. I mean, Mozart is in a lot of fucking movies. And like uh, everyone's remade his, like, shit loads of music. Modern music is Mozart's repertoire anyway, just redone. I don't know. That's all I have to say about it. All right. Let's go on to Chris. Okay. My choice is Metallica. <laughs> Metallica 50 years from today. Metallica 50? is classical music, kind of. Metallica uh, is a band that came out in 1981. Come on, they're already over 30 years old. 100% have a following um, in in 50 years from now. They are like... Metallica is like the Beatles of, of our era. They're like gay in the Beatles. And that's saying something. There was, a, there, was a, there was a Facebook post a little while ago. And someone, I don't know, some teenage girl put out uh, a picture of like Justin Bieber. And he did a concert. And it was a concert, and it was like 300,000 people. And it, 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 it was a picture of Justin Bieber in front of these 3, 300,000 people. And it was like, who can ever do that? 300,000 people at a concert. And then, you know what? Another guy posted a picture of Metallica. Picture of Metallica in Moscow in 1991. 1. 1.6 million people showed up for that concert. I think I, 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 think I might have a caller coming in. We'll just see. We'll just see what happens here. You're calling somebody? <laughs> uh, I yeah, said well, you call a friend. We this might is have, the first. This is not <laughs> we might have who wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> hey, Rick, 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 how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, buddy? Good. You're on air with uh, Trivial Debates right now? <laughs> yeah. I uh, just wanted to confirm. Hi. Uh, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple guys here who are laughing <laughs> because, because I am doing the phone a friend thing, right? Right, right. The, the question is, what band will still be uh, relevant in 50 years from now? Uh, what, what, what cover band you, uh, are you the front man of? Uh, Sandman, Metallica tribute band. Sandman, Metallica oh, tribute band. Sorry. Uh, do, do you think that Metallica will still be relevant in 50 years from now? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, they're part, of, uh, they're part of heavy metal rock history. They changed... The, the course of uh, heavy metal into mainstream, and they were the first ones to do it. Oh, no. This, see, this isn't really the show for a big metal throwdown, yeah. but I might have to fucking throw my you you know, know, dick I, in the I, ring here. I, I agree, too, Rick. J- just for the fans, we, we, we know that you're the front man of uh, Sandman, the Metallica cover band. Just uh, let us know what other, uh, what other bands you have played with, just to give us your musical credibility. Yeah, man, tell us your credentials. I played with uh, Helix. I played with Anvil. I played with uh, <coughs> who else? The Headstones. See, yeah. now we're talking. Now we're talking some fucking bands, okay? Fuck Metallica. Hel- so, Helix and Anvil. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> okay, thanks for your input, Rick. Yeah, think about it, man. 50 years. Is it like Metallica is in rock and roll history, not to mention all the other bands that have been in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Of course they're going to be fucking relevant after 50 years. Of course. Ooh. Metallica's going to be there, man. Hey, so is Helix. Well, if I'm still alive. Yeah, and so is Helix, and so is, so is the Headstone, so... I'd much rather be bumping Helix in 50 years than Metallica, to be honest. <laughs> it's not like it's fucking Helix. Thanks for your input, Rick. Thanks for your time. All right, brother. Keep Thanks. rocking, buddy. Thanks, Rick. Right. See ya. Bye now. Peace out, Rick. Okay. All right, okay. all right. I'm done. I, I, I rest my case. I don't, I don't even see how. I don't even know what you just <laughs> tried to prove there. You know, a guy who's in a Metallica cover band, and that's uh, like a guy, ama- guy in a Metallica cover band that was who also played for the Headstones. <laughs> he plays in Helix. I don't understand. What What is your? How does this help you? The point is, Dave. Next time it's my answer. You better see. Wait and see who I call. <laughs> my point. My point is, I have a. Okay. I have an actual musician's point of view. Guy who played in Helix. Guy who plays for the Headstones. Guy who's in a Metallica cover band. An I'm, actual relevant musician. Okay, point we're of definitely view. going I down have. to the final two of Benny and Chris. Dave, you're <laughs> definitely out on this one. Adele is done. <laughs> Why? Why do you hate Adele? <sighs> I don't. But they gave much better arguments, and Chris's was freaking great. 
Chris had to call a friend. Because Adele, Adele is still making sad music off the same like breakup. She's married with to a different guy with three kids now. Like, cause she's not over yet. Tim, you gotta make a decision. You know what, Metallica. <laughs> All right. Like, you James, know what, James Chris, Ulrich. Chris has this point. Thanks. <laughs> Metallica definitely wins the music category. I, I even called the guy. So, <laughs> Chris is call a friend. <laughs> You know what? You were close to winning, even without the call a friend, and your call a friend put you over the top. You know what? <laughs> Actually, that guy I just called is in an upcoming Kia commercial. You will see it on TV. I don't understand what the fuck's going on here. How did you win? <laughs> what? <laughs> Chris just won yeah. that category. <laughs> now we are going to go to TV. Okay. Yeah, now we're going to TV. That's right. He called his friend, and fucking he wins. <laughs> no, Betty, <laughs> Betty, you're going to be first for TV. All right, the TV question. What pre-1995 TV show could be made most successful by returning now? Betty. Well, let me see. Reality TV is completely, you know, dominated what's going on now. Anyway, reality TV shows are the one. You guys won't even know this show, unfortunately. I mean, I think I've tried to describe describe it to you, Dave, before, but Gladiators, it's called? It's basically American Gladiators, but it was just called Gladiators, according to Ben. I'm sorry, Ben. Kind of, yeah. That answer's already been taken. By who? <laughs> what, American Gladiators? <laughs> tell me who. <laughs> tell me which one of these motherfuckers has the English yes, Gladiators. Well, no, but he's saying he wants the original British version, which is just called Gladiators. Yeah, that's right. I think that's pretty much the same thing, though, isn't it? Well, it's a completely different TV show. <laughs> like, well, shit. Explain what Gladiators was, because... Uh, you know what? Oh. I'm, I I actually chose... Them. I'm just going to speak up now and say, <laughs> I chose American Gladiators, and I'm just, like, <laughs> fucking mind-blown that Benny chose the same fucking thing as me. That's pretty cool, right? Like, eh? <laughs> I think we've got some kind of connection, bro. Good job, buddy. Like, <laughs> you can't believe that, can you? <laughs> But <laughs> out of all the fucking nineties shows or anything pre nineteen ninety five, we both fucking choose American Gladiators. <laughs> no, he picked British Gladiators. Well, okay, well, well Gladiators. Anyway. <laughs> Which is pretty much the same thing, though. So you'd have the same argument. Well, the way Benny ex- explained it to me sounded a little different, um, but basically oh, yeah? the same idea. But like, well, I mean, <laughs> on the British, on the British Gladiators, like. <laughs> You know, you've got you've got to go through a course, yeah, and sometimes you've got to fight these actual gladiators. That's the exact hell, same gone. thing. Chris is gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Exact same, same, same show. Did they, did they have funny names? <laughs> yeah, like Wolf and Storm and all this shit. Okay, that's the exact same names they had in the American Gladiators. <laughs> well, no. Uh, can it I was... just go now? Like, can, <laughs> okay, I'm, think, I'm thinking... I well, think Benny <laughs> might have taken the win out of your sales. Okay, what we're going to yeah, do maybe. now is... Maybe. Because Chris already picked this. <laughs> he didn't. He picked show. American Gladiators. I, I chose American Gladiators. I picked Gladiators. <laughs> it's the same show. It's I not the same show. Did. Look. Hang on. How can it be the same show if you can turn on one TV channel and see American <laughs> Gladiators and at the same time see the this week's episode because of Gladiators? Because the only on difference channel. between the two is the accents. No. The people in it, the people paying for it, the people, the place it's filmed with the cameras it's filmed with. He makes a good point. Okay, so what makes British gladiators so much better than American gladiators? Is well, what you have to argue then. Well, that's a tough one since I've never seen it. But you've I've never seen the show? No, you've never seen American so, gladiators. Oh, oh. Well, it's it's like British gladiators. I think <laughs> we should try it actually. I'm gonna. I'll watch. I'll watch some American gladiators. You watch the British one, and we is, fucking is should it, compare because clearly, you know, it's the damn same show. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, it's a good show. It's, anyway. a, it's a good show since we both, both chose it. That fucking, I think we should have half each, to be honest. You want to team up? <laughs> All right. Well, well, you know what? I Are you done, Benny? <laughs> yeah, no. To be fair, you can take the credit on this one. You can take Gladiators and run with it, sir. You know what? I love... For the finish. I, 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 it's because I love Powerball. Do you remember Powerball when they used to have to get into the big fucking balls and and run and jump over those little things with the steam coming out? I, I don't remember. Chris, why, that why? was probably the worst th- <laughs> one of the things they had to do. <laughs> do you remember Joust? Joust was awesome. They were over this uh, the, the, the fucking water and they had to like joust with each other. Or they had the rings. Do you remember the rings? And they had to like grab each other and pull each other off the rings. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, Chris, that Chris, sounds Chris, I watched it too. <clears throat> it's okay. Chris, the, the, the show wasn't popular because of what they did. I think the show was popular because of what they were wearing. No, okay. If you want to talk about what they were well, wearing. That's timeless as well. Jazz. Okay, here's my here's my point then. Jazz Nitro Saber. All fucking hot built chicks. Chris. On that show. Nitro was a guy. 
Nitro wasn't a guy. <laughs> Are you sure? I think there were two Nitros. I think there were two Nitros, yeah. Uh, pre op <laughs> <don't> <laughs> Anyways, Anyways, there were all these bo- bodybuilding checks. And I liked watching them, and yeah. and then Hilarious. at the end of it, at well, the end of it, they had the eliminator. Do you remember the eliminator? And they had to run out of that treadmill, and so many people got fucked up at that treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> it was kind of like that show now. What's it called? Um, Wipeout. You ever seen Wipeout now? It's yeah, fucking no. Wipeout. Wipeout's stupid. Wipeout is like it's Wipeout to be is stupid. Like, Wipeout is like jumping off bouncy things. That's what me. American okay. Gladiators was. No, because Ale- no, because the American gladiators was the, like real gladiating. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't like wipeout. <laughs> wipeout. <laughs> what do you? What, no, it? wipeout is like friggin' jumping off bouncy things. That's all it is. You jump off a friggin' puffed up thing, and that's all you do. Well, that's okay, like, American okay, gladiators okay, Chris, Chris, fight. Chris, you're done. What? I think we need to move on to Dave. You want to know my answer? Do you yes. remember? Do you remember Tim? Chris, wait, wait, Chris. You got one more thing. Remember breakthrough and conquer. Where like they had to like hold their arms together and they had to grab the football and they had to like break through and conquer. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that was freaking awesome. Okay, Chris, we're moving on to Dave. Okay, Dave, what's your answer for this question? My my answer was red red dwarf. Uh, <laughs> red dwarf was a. Uh, They're so- still making it. Yeah, are they really? I think so. Yeah, they were going to make another season. But they like when was the last time they made a season? Uh, two or three years ago. Really. I thought yeah. that the show hadn't been made in years, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, it like they finished it for a bunch of years, then did another season, I think, and then waited a bit, and then did the same, and yeah, that kind of shit. Okay. They're, not, they're not very committed, <laughs> is no. what I'm saying. Uh, have you ever seen it? No. R- Red Dwarf? Okay, it's basically about this guy, Dave Lister. He works on this uh, ship. It's a, a mining ship, I believe, called the Red Dwarf. It flies through space, and uh, he's just a worker on it, right? So anyway, he gets in trouble r- one day, and so they they end up putting him in, in suspended animation. At, while when he's in suspended animation, everybody on the ship is killed by a, a, this major disaster. And so he wakes up three million years later, and like his cat, his his cat has uh has a, uh, over three million years has evolved into this guy, this this cat the, man. The cat is now a man. Yeah, the cat. Well, he's like a descendant of his original cat. So. They evolved over three million years, so he's like this really like flamboyant like cat man. He's like, "Hey, I'm a cat. I'm fabulous, right?" Jesus, uh, is that right? Would you say that's accurate, Dave? I, I would have thought you could sum Red Dwarf up in, with one thing. The reason it's a comedy is because it's British people in space. British people in space dealing with problems. So you got you got a cat man. So that's the concept that's hilarious, really. Yeah, and it's just super. <laughs> it's just super dry and super funny. And really well done, and uh, and just really out there with some of its ideas, but it, it never loses. It's it's a hilarious show. Okay, well the t- the okay, the, 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 go- the question Tim was, what show would do better? Do you think, okay, I think people would actually watch to, my show? Or? I need to hear an argument over what's better, the American Gladiators or the British Gladiators. Benny, you go God first. God damn, are we still on that? Oh, fuck no. Yeah, you go. He's first. basically saying I'm out of this with Red yeah, Dwarf. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm see. saying Dave is done. What's better? Why is British Gladiators better than American Gladiators? I'll say that, well, I don't know, I'm going to throw this one down, because even I thought they were quite funny, it was the funny accents on the show. Because, yeah. I mean, you had, I don't know, I used to watch this show when I was pretty young, and there was this, like, one of the main referees was really, like, Glaswegian, and you're like, you will go on my first whistle, ah, Claudia, you will be going on my second whistle, and that kind of shit. And yeah, the accents I think tipped the edge with the, the, the combine that little bit of comedy with the uh, the action. <laughs> well, I hate I hate to win two times in a row, but my answer is Jazz was really hot. So was Sable, and Hulk Hogan hosted an episode of American Gladiators. Just one, just one. Yes, but Hulk Hogan hosted an episode. I'm pretty sure. So that pro- makes it better. He probably <laughs> made it around the English one too. <laughs> No, he didn't. How do you know? Are you sure? <laughs> I'm 100 percent positive. Get your phone out and Google it. I can. We can. We can YouTube Hulk Hogan and American Gladiators, and it's freaking hilarious. Well, yeah, but go Wikipedia the English Gladiators because they had plenty of guest stars. <laughs> Maybe someone you'd be even more excited Fact about. Checker. Hulk Hogan. Jazz and Saber are hot. I'm thinking based on what I got. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Based on pure passion, show. I have to and go Hulk with Chris. Hogan. That's not passion. That's crazy. Because <laughs> you guys have the same argument, and Chris gave. One hell of a lot more passion to the argument. Woo! So, is Chris getting the point? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, I, so the key to win. Guess what, guys? Two, zero, no, zero. No, so far. Because you, Two, base, zero, you basically, zero. when you pick the same show, different countries, it comes down to who has the most <laughs> passionate argument. And Chris fought it harder. Oh, I okay. saw him. I saw him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw him. 
All right, so the way to win on this show is a, either to receive a phone call, or no, sorry, to make a phone call, to get someone to answer your question for you, or just to be jacked. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You be ready, Benny. Hey. Now we will move on to sports. Who is the most dominant athlete to still play their game past the age of 40? Let's start with Chris. Okay. So here's my answer, and I, uh, to, to, to be honest with you, I'm surprised that uh, Dave didn't choose this one before me, because I know Dave got his answers in before me, uh, but I'm going to say Glenn Howard. The curler. <laughs> the curler, of course. And oh, Dave, come God. on, weren't you thinking of this? Oh. Uh, he did come to mind, I will admit that. Okay, the guy is 53 years old now, okay, um, from Ontario. This year is going to be his, he's going to the Briars this year again. By think, the way, I think he's like a six-time world champion. He's he's a four-time world Dave, champion. Dave, you're not helping yourself. Okay. He's a four-time world champion, a four-time Briar champion. The the guy. Wait, wait. Played, how how many of those championships are won after forty? Uh, it doesn't matter. Two. It does. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Two of them were. It, it, no, because your question was who is like still an athlete after forty. Yeah. It doesn't matter because because it doesn't matter. You, you could choose a baseball player who still plays after forty. It doesn't matter how many championships he's won before that, right? It is just the fact that he's still playing. Well, you say he won four. He won two when he was in his like thirties and or twenties, and then yeah, two when he was over forty. Yeah, and he and he's still going. Um, this this guy has been so far in his life 196 Briar games. More than anyone on the planet. Canadian well, curling. Well, he's older. Of course he'd have more. He's 53 years old. And he's going back to the Briars this year. Like, this guy is not done. Um, Glenn Howard is 53 years old now. I would be surprised, like, to see him retire before he's, like, 70 years old. No, this he'll guy, retire this before guy, he's 70. No, he won't. This guy is just going <laughs> to This guy is just gonna keep going and going and going. His brother didn't play that until he was that old. Well, his, his brother so was arguably better than him. How but old was his brother when he retired? His brother was like probably 55. So two years older than he is now. Probably, yeah. Something like that. Anyways, the guy has four Briar championships. Uh, he's representing Team Ontario again this year. Uh, he's he, he, in the past, has won eight Ontario curling championships in a row. I don't know what more you can say about this guy. If you, Tim, Google, try this one time. Google, like, best curling shot ever. Who's going to come up? Glenn Howard. And Dave, you've seen this shot. Yeah, yeah. You've seen this shot. Uh, uh, Benny probably wouldn't care. Uh, Tim, I don't know if he would care, but just Google the shot and watch it, and you'll be like, I, I can't even describe it. It's, it's amazing. And that's all i got to say. Dave is up next. Um, I have Nolan Ryan, a famous baseball player for the Texas Rangers, and he is one of the most successful pitchers of all time one of the most feared pitchers of all time he was one of the first guys to hit uh, throw a fastball over 100 miles per hour I believe he was maybe the first in fact and he after the age of 40 he had a thousand strikeouts a thousand which is crazy it's an insane amount uh he was he was known to like throw down and fight guys right on the mound he was a tough texan um uh, kind of guy when, when i was a kid he was one of my idols Thought he was a, an amazing pitcher and uh, someone I really uh, revere in terms of uh, baseball. Of course, a Hall of Famer in his own right and uh, one of the best ever. And it probably had his best years over the age of 40, if anything. Benny? Yarmir Yaga? Yaga is a good answer, actually. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, this very evening, I'm going to check the score. <laughs> this very evening, he's fucking pushing to, pa- to pass Gordie Howe, his number third fucking place in the all time points. And he might do it. Goal and an assist. Job's a good one. Third of all time. And he isn't, was he like 47? 45? No, he's like no, he's he, 43. He just, 43. Yeah, he just okay. turned 43. He's having a great year. I can't believe it. Florida fucking number one in the division. Yeah, yeah, well, in our fantasy hockey league, by the way, he's been trying to be traded to me a whole bunch of times, and I didn't want him. <laughs> well, I, I actually had him. <laughs> At the beginning of the season, when he got all those points, and I yeah. dropped him, and then Jody picked him up right when I, he started sloping. Yeah, like I understand he's a popular player over the age of forty, but um, he's not exactly the <coughs> like he's not the best player in the league by any means. And he was in the All Stars this year, but the, that's because he's a popular player. He's not necessarily based on the merits of his points in production. But he does have a mullet. Not anymore. No, he's growing it back. Well, that was a joke. Yeah, but he said, you know, no, no, he's he had the back. mullet. Yeah, in, in the day he had the. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, Tim. The reason I think I should win 
is because <laughs> it's because it's your answer. <laughs> is because it's my answer first of first and foremost. But my player is fifty three years old. He's still he's going to the Briars this year. He's going to be playing at Ottawa Briars twenty sixteen. Um, and and you know what? He's going to be doing it for many more years after that. What do you think? He's already fifty three. He's going to continue but, but to play. Chris, stay out fifty three. The question is over forty. Fifty three doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how he's past way over you forty. Are. He's way over 40, and he's going to continue <laughs> but, to play. But, but Chris, we're, okay, we're comparing here curling to baseball and hockey, and I think Benny will get on with me with this, that baseball and hockey, to make the pros in those leagues, is significantly harder than in curling. I don't and think so. I don't think so, Dave. You know what I think? <laughs> you know well, what you I think? were right. I was thinking Dave, that. Dave, how many, how many years have you been curling? Uh, probably 12. Are he's you already, the, are he's you already pro- fucked up his knee. So, so, so Dave has already fucked up his knee, <laughs> and he's never made it to the pros, yet he's been curling for 12 wait, years. Wait, wait, wait. 12 are, years. Wait, wait. 12 years Chris, this guy's Chris. been curling and never made it to the pros. I have to ask, are there pro curlers? There, there are pro curlers. Glenn oh. Howard is one of them. <laughs> there are pro curlers. And guess what? You could, Tim... I, 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 How much does a pro, pro curler make a year? They don't make a lot of. It's not about the money. It's about. <laughs> <laughs> it's not wow. about the money. Here's the thing, Dave. You know what? In the, Dave, you're the only other curler here, so you got to attest to this. Eamon's a curler for me. Well. Okay, Eamon's a curler as well. You know what? You can, Eamon. Yeah. You, we can, we can curl for twenty years, and we will never be as good as these guys that play at the Briar, right? Like, uh, how yeah, do I know? that's right. How maybe, the fuck do you know? He might be t- going there next fucking month. Maybe Eamon will because he's only 13. But, Dave, we, like, honestly, what we do is amateur curling. It's it's yes. fun. We do it for fun. Right. And it doesn't We're, matter it's if It's a you, beer league. It's it, literally yes, a beer league. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't matter if we play for 12 years. We play for 20 years. We're never fucking making it to the Briars. We're never going to be that good. These guys that actually do it are actually. Suck. Are, 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 no, these guys that actually do actually do it are actual athletes. They they are not like us. <laughs> They're not us. <clears throat> Even Jeff Mater. <laughs> Even Jeff Mater. Jeff Jeff Jeff. I I gotta imagine Jeff Mater. He's he's like, oh, one day I want to make it to the Briars. He's and imagining he, Jeff Mater. No, he's he will never make Why it. Why are you crushing? Why are you crushing his dream? I'm not gonna crush his dream. I'm just saying. Why Tyler Morgan made it to the Briar? Tyler Morgan's good. He is good. But Jeff good. not good. Jeff not good. No, Jeff is good too. He's is he not Tyler Morgan good? He's not Tyler Morgan good. And he's not. He's definitely not Howard. Howard. No. Glenn Howard. Good. Glenn Howard. He's definitely not yeah, Glenn Howard. You, you good. missed the first name. I yeah, thought he was going sorry. Howard the Duck for a second. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I got confused. Okay. He's definitely not Glenn, okay, ha- Glenn okay, Howard. Chris, good. I got to cut you off and let Jeff rebuttal or Dave Jeff rebuttal Dave, what you just said. Dave. Wrong beta. Um, well, yeah, like exactly like making being a, uh, one of the best pitchers of all time is a more distinguished honor in its right than being, you know, among the best curlers ever. Glenn what do you Howard, mean among? Glenn Howard is not even the best curler ever. Like, he, so who is? Well, probably like Kevin Martin, but <laughs> you know, like uh, he's up there. He's probably top five, something like top 10, I guess. Okay. But you guys are going to have a curling off. I'm <laughs> fucking out here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I have a lot of respect for Glenn Howard, but like, in, how do you compare him to Nolan Ryan? You can't. Like, Nolan Ryan is one of the best pitchers of all time. A thousand strikeouts o- over over the age of forty. A lot of Glenn Howard's success was in his early years, when in his twenties, and, and he was a vice back then. You know, and he he emerged as a as a, an exceptional curler, uh, really exceptional as a skip later on in life. You're right, but. Don't don't do you do you agree that he has the best shot ever in curling? He happens to have it. Like it was kind <laughs> of like it's a little bit fluke. It's a lot of you skill. know that shot that that shot was not fluke. It's, I I wish that least, I could. It's at least five percent fluke. I, would I say. wish that I could show Tim that shot and just like if Tim understood the game and how much that shot meant and it would it, it would be amazing to him. Like Tim Glenn Howard once made this shot that was like so impossible. That it, it like amazed the curling world and is like the number one shot of all time. Okay, Dave, do you have anything that can beat that shot? Um, <laughs> just just the consistency <laughs> of Nolan Ryan. He's a Hall of Fame baseball pitcher. He's one of, you know, he had his best years over the age of forty. I think he qualifies on every level. I think he's being the, 
the fact of who he is and what he did and the, the league and the level he played at in his particular game, which is a highly more competitive game than curling. Curling ha- is dominated by Canadians. Nothing wrong with that. But a handful of Canadians, like one in 30 Canadians is a curler, right? Um, and among those, like maybe probably one in – 10,000 is probably good enough to be a pro curler, maybe. I wouldn't even say that, Dave. Like, oh, okay. L- let me say this, Dave. Let's say Glenn Howard had to skip a team, okay? And he had, like, been given, like, four leads from our league. Do you think he could win the game? Do you think he could win just based on being the skip of that team? No. No? No. Why not? Because he I think that he could be able to call the shot so well – that it doesn't matter who he has on his team. It does matter. If he had if he had three you, if he had three Chris Seymours if he had three on of, his squad, he would he, fucking get killed every he, single time. It wouldn't matter what he did. If he had three of me, he would definitely win. <laughs> I if he had three Chris Seymours, then I don't think anybody could win with that. Okay, what if we had three Eamon Maters? Do you think that would be be, be better? I think it would be better. It, it's know. not even about that. Like, no, he <laughs> couldn't do it. He could not. He okay. I gotta cut this off. A lot of cur- uh, uh, okay. Just one more point. All right. Um, being a, a pitcher is an individual game. It's an individual effort. And in curling, it's a team effort. That like what Chris is talking about, having three nobodies on his team, and he could still win. It's absolutely <laughs> false. You know, he couldn't. It, it, all four. He absolutely all could. All four players have to contribute to the success. Uh, of a team, and uh, and if you don't have that, then you won't win. And in pitching, you have to do it pretty much all on your own. You have a little bit of help from the catcher, but that's it. All right. Okay. Well, this, I dis- I disagree, uh, but well, we'll see t- what Tim's answer is. This sports category is it was really close. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Do I get a chance to uh, you know? No, Benny, you're, you're the final. No, Benny, Benny, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, what? Did you never Why? Because you didn't make the final. Wow. The final. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make the, the final debate. There's no final. This is one particular question. But do you have something to say about it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. If you, I mean, you know, I won't force it on you, but... What do you have to say? Well, in this debate, between a curler and a baseball player, and a hockey player, <laughs> <laughs> between... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, okay, the phrase is dominant athlete, yeah? yeah. So we're going dominant, we're going athlete, and we're going over 40. Okay, so yours is definitely over 40, 50 yard. Okay, I'll give you that one. Athlete, yeah, curling's a pub game, okay? Curling is a game, it's like darts. It basically, you can do it at a pub with, which happens to have like a nice ice strip. By the way, any I, job I, I, Tim, Tim, I just, want to, I just want you to know this. Whoever let, says. Let Benny finish. No, because I got to undrop <laughs> this. Whoever says that curling <laughs> is a game like darts. Has never tried curling. Let Benny because finish. There's no, no, nobody can Benny say. Benny has the mic. You know what? The we only. We all have a mic. No. Okay, here's the thing. There's a lot of debate right now whether curling is a sport or not. Okay. <laughs> and is there any you know debate what? whether hockey's a sport? You know what? And, and people who have never curled before say that curling is not a sport. Anyone who's ever tried it says yes. Holy fuck! This is a sport. <laughs> Chris, Benny has the mic right now. Okay, well, I've got really a talking does. pillow. Yeah, it's not a sport. I'm just Any- really mad. See, it makes me really mad for when people say curling is not a sport. Clearly. Well, yeah, but you got to think. Is so it, it t- makes me really is mad. Yeah, but is it touching a nerve like a sore spot? It's, like, it touches a sore spot. Maybe in your heart of hearts you think we that it's true. My, my heart races when I play curling. <laughs> my heart <laughs> races. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris, <laughs> let Benny go. I'm just saying. <laughs> Any sport you can do uh, with a beer in your hand does not count as the sport. We or don't have pa- beer on the ice. Any time. Yep, yep, you could. You could feasibly do that. Be like, hold my beer. I'm just going to... Mm, okay. I'm just going to slide very slowly on one foot down some ice. You know what, Benny? Yeah, you ever fun. you ever tried sweeping the rock while listening to the skip, <laughs> while trying to communicate oh, back listening. to the skip how how the rock is going, okay, which okay, way it's okay, going, okay, okay, while, okay, while okay. trying not to judge the rock. Don't forget okay, we're, done, we're done. We're done. We're done. What? Your sweeping partner. Uh, so hang on, yes. List, so listening is a big part of the athletic, you know, shit you've got to go through. Communication. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of communication. There's a lot of difficult there's listening. I'm really gonna break a sweat. Okay, <laughs> guys. You know what? You gotta you gotta also you gotta also follow this rock at at the, the pace that the rock is going. If they throw it fast or slow, you gotta follow it's it. It's because you're holding on to it. You want it. <sighs> yeah. This uh, category is Ryan Howard. going to Dave. Yes. Because Chris was definitely the most passionate, yeah, was but it? Dave's argument was one hell of a lot better. <laughs> yes. 
Thank you. Fuck. <laughs> we are on to history. What world leader from history made the biggest impact on how the world lives today? Benny. I'll probably go Alexander the Great then, I guess. Who? Alexander, Alexander the Great. Oh. Alexander oh, yeah. of Mes- Mesopotamia. Yeah. I believe it was his, you know. What did he do? Evening title. Uh, well, he conquered. He basically conquered more of the globe and put it in one unified kind of empire than anyone ever since. So he was a dictator. So, awesome. Fucking a. He a was con- conqueror. He was, a dictator. Awesome. He's whatever you want to. Yeah, I know yeah. it's not changing the world in a positive way, and I'm very sorry about that. But you know, it's the it's what he did at the end of the day. Like he's had. What if the world is one way and then one person from history comes along and it's the biggest change you're looking for? Like, if that's what we're talking about, significant impact, then it's got to be him because, like, he's taken over more of the whole fucking planet at one time and held it than anyone ever. Well, the question was who is like the biggest world conqueror? <laughs> it's like who's made the biggest change in the world? Like, biggest the way, impact. The way the biggest impact. How do you make a bigger? Our, how do you our, make our, a bigger our, impact on something than fucking conquering it? Well, because we don't live our lives that way now. It's what, not. What, that's what, not how we live our lives. But what from then does that affect now? Yeah. What's the influence on today? Well, today uh, is today is happening on the same timeline. So <laughs> anything that's happening right now is a consequence of that. No matter which way you slice it, st- shit would be different now if that hadn't happened <laughs> by significant amounts. Uh, it's got to be. In fact, it's exponential because with every like you can say that about a lot of things. Well, yeah. Every, well, the nature is exponential. With every new generation, like the stuff that's had an impact and uh, has changed things, grows tenfold because it gets fed, you know, to a certain portion into each generation. It's awesome that Benny makes up his answers on the fly <laughs> <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it's just awesome. That's all, right. all I'm. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> no, what's Thank awesome you. is that. He actually manages to come up with answers on the fly. <laughs> All right. That actually makes sense. All right. Okay. Chris, let's hear what you have to say about this. Okay. My, my answer was um, Abraham Lincoln. Do you want to know why? Because he was the 16th uh, president of the United States. This is the guy that signed the Emancipation uh, Proclamation. I like how, 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 how you check your notes. Abe had, had to help Chris, you out. Chris there. has notes there. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even in America. Uh, no, no, hey, guys. Hey, I wouldn't even know that word. Guys, I know, I know. I've just uh, like had, I've had like four beers, so I have to like look down to see what the right word is. Hey, Chris, but, it's okay. Uh, I wouldn't is, even know that word. Okay, this is a guy that I'm this, disappointed in both of you. Okay. <laughs> this is the, this is the guy that signed the Emancipation Proclamation. What? That basically. <laughs> um, slavery, slavery was over. Um, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for Abe Lincoln, honestly, the United States would have been um, two separate countries right now. They, it would have been like northern and southern U.S. So they would have been different, he, different he, countries. He, he crushed that rebellion. He crushed that rebellion. He like he was he was the president during the Civil War. You know, he's the guy who abolished slavery. He is like the the probably the first guy in history. To speak out against racism, I would say. No, he's not. No, not even is. close. No, he, he is. Like, he like is for sure. Uh, decades earlier. He is for sure. Um, and it wasn't like when slavery ended, racism ended. And, and slavery did and not Abe end. Abe Lincoln was racist <laughs> as well. Like, don't get. You know what, Dave? It's not that. It's not that ending slavery ended racism. It was a stepping stone. Uh, towards where we are today, and it's a very significant <laughs> stepping stone. Um, due to the fact that if 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 that didn't happen, blacks would still be enslaved in the USA. This movement never would have happened. Like right do you, now, do you feel like today there would still I, be slaves I feel, in the South, even if they hadn't won the war? Yes, I feel today that uh, all people of all colors of all nations. Our our friends and we're all, all <laughs> good together. Oh, um, and it's all sense. it's all because of Abe Lincoln. We we <laughs> gotta let Dave have his chance. I'd just like to say, but because Abe let all different races come to the table, that's why we have the British Benny here. Yes, at our table. See, I'm not sure that's a result Benny, of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Benny Benny wouldn't be here. <laughs> Benny. Betty would not be here. Betty's not for all this day. Just for the record, Betty's not black. Like. I know, but he would not be here <laughs> if it weren't for Abe Lincoln. Actually, Betty, Betty might be here. Betty might be in the northern USA if it weren't for 
Well, like, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> he wouldn't be allowed in the <laughs> South, though. <laughs> okay, Chris, you're done. Dave? Damn. What do you have to say about this topic? I don't know how to follow that. I'm going to say, no. okay, I, my pick was George Washington. He was the first president of the United States, for those who don't know. And he was the general in the uh, colonial army uh, that fought the Revolutionary War, which, of course, won the uh, independence for the United States from Benny's evil. That's why he's throwing bottle caps at me. He's angry about it. Still that wasn't me, you fool. Who threw that? George Washington. Great guy, great world leader. <laughs> he actually didn't believe in parties. Uh, when he was uh, elected president, the first president, he said there should be no political parties. We should all just try to work together. And for a while that existed until, of course, he uh, had to leave office and eventually passed on. And it created this great divide with Dem the Democrats and the Republicans today and seeing all the, the controversy and the polarizing nature of having two factions like that constantly battling back and forth. And he had the, the foresight to say that, that uh, 250 years ago to say, hey, we shouldn't uh, tr create little tribes like this. It's only to be counterproductive. Let's learn from the mistakes of, of our forefathers that being the British Empire and seeing how the par the problems that come with the Parliament, uh, <laughs> we'll create the checks and balance system. He was very much integral to uh, with Jefferson in the um, design of that kind of government and and you know the first uh, independent kind of democracy that wasn't based off a transition from a monarchy. So from that you know and just the fact that he was an amazing general and fought that war and you know he he stood up with many others at the time is contemporaries uh, who said, Hey, we're not going to take it. You know, they, 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 they tried to put a tax on the tea, Tim. They put a tax on the tea and you know what they said? We're going to throw it in the fucking Harbor. The I don't Boston. think I said we're going to throw it in the Harbor. The Harbor. They weren't Canadian. And there was the Boston tea party. That's what they called it. That's what be the hammer. <laughs> I'm going to throw that shit in the hammer. Who's with me? I prefer coffee. So hey, anyway, that's it. He had wooden teeth too. Don't forget. Yeah. By the way, George Washington, was in a lot of shit from his uh, father for cutting down a cherry tree. My president actually has a, a big fucking statue at at the White House. Yeah, it's a little weird, actually. Big fucking statue. It's not at Washington the, it's, doesn't have a big fucking it's statue. It's not at the White House, just Doesn't for it? the record. I would have thought there was it, one somewhere. It's, it's down the street, sort of. Well, it's near there. It's yeah. near there. Yeah. It's just to say my leader has a big fucking statue, his doesn't. Well, mine's on the $1 bill. And your leader got in trouble for chopping down a cherry tree. He didn't get in trouble. He got in trouble. <laughs> well, he shouldn't have done it, right? Well, the fucking cherry tree. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Uh, Tim, can I? It, can you read me the question again, please, one more time? It was, what world leader in history? World history. Okay, thank you very much. Made the biggest impact on how we live today. Okay. So yeah, we've got we've got world. We've got history, and yeah. we've got impact. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so hang on, wait for it. before Because I can see you chomping at the bit there. I'm waiting. It. I'm waiting. All right, both of yours don't really qualify for world or history. Oh, really? Because what, it's just North America. And also, it's like a two, the span of like 500 years, which isn't history. That's history. This, right? is why everyone, this is why everyone in Europe is like, oh, fucking Americans and Canadians. Like, they think the world started like 200 years ago. Because, Benny, you don't know. History is yesterday. Yesterday is history. <laughs> yesterday is you history. You don't know, Benny. <laughs> wait, wait. Let, let's let you Benny don't know speak. about yesterday. Let's let Benny speak. When my troubles seem so far away. You know, the point that being the, neither of their answers are like either world or history. It's not It's not a big enough span of human. Like, we're talking about humans. The whole human uh, experience across the isn't entire the question, world. Isn't the question about today? What world leader in history world ha leader. had an influence impact on, the on today? Yes. Impact on and today. I don't see the uh, the long term cultural effects of Alexander the Great. Yes, if those events didn't happen, history would be different. You could say yes. that about a numerous amount of things and a numerous amount of different types of Alexand <laughs> Alexander the Great influenced every single part of your life and every single part of every, every other person's uh. life in the entire world. Where the countries are divided, where languages are spoken. What cultures impact what other cultures? Which direction people migrate? Well, it's what only, color people's skin is? It's uh, only, like how it's many only, of different races and like different majorities and minorities there are in the I, whole I, world? I, I just think well, I think Benny's a little bit be more existential about this. I think he's you know it's a it's a bit it's world history. I world. Know, I know it's world, but like okay, like 
uh, do you think about ancient Greece a lot? No, because you know why? It's a long fucking time ago. It, 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 Greece it's is still a country, man, and there's still a huge <laughs> amount of today's they're, culture. They're a freaking poor country. Ancient Greece. Greece. They're a freaking poor country. And the only reason <laughs> <laughs> they're a freaking poor country, they have no money. What the fuck I is that going to do with anything that we're talking about? You know, it, it was back ass. and forth. I was going back and forth between two people. Chris, you were not one of them. <laughs> when I originally had your answer, I thought if you argued it right, you could. I thought you had a good shot at winning this. But I am giving this to Benny. I actually wrote Sorry. in Dave at one point, I'm and I had to scratch it out and it give in. it to Benny. Why do you feel like? Why do you feel like Benny argued it better? Because Benny went into full world. Like he like. At first, when Benny first gave his argument, yeah, this one, this one, you over this like whole world long time yeah, ago. He was not going to get the point. Yeah. Until he rebuttaled. His was, rebuttal. It, Got him the point. His rebuttal was good. I'll give him that. Well, good. It's a good job I had a moment to get it had, in. Then. Dave, you had the point. I actually even wrote it in for you. Yeah. But his rebuttal took it away from you. Okay. I tried my best. It's still anybody's game. I yeah. tried my best. It's tried two my to best. one to one. <laughs> right now, it's two to one to one. Uh. Do you know my answers? Okay, movies. What was the best movie idea that never actually got made? Chris can start this one. Uh, my answer on this is an Alfred Hitchcock movie. That was supposed to be by, made back in 1970. Movie is called Kaleidoscope. Don't know if you guys ever heard of it. No. No. Okay, this movie. This movie was going to be about a gay bodybuilder. Ooh, I like it already. Uh, in who, the 70s? Yeah, in the 70s. Who went on a raping spree killing women. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Hitchcock. Well, was yeah, Hitchcock. Kaleidoscope. Sweet. Look it up, guys. Why didn't it get made? Well, because it was too controversial. Chris, I think we should make made. it. Are you sure? Is that why? No, that's what, it was that's too why. close to Psycho. You You're too close to Psycho. You know what? He was thinking about making this movie, and uh, uh, a lot of theaters turned him down. Ugh. A lot of theaters turned him down um, for this movie. Like, think about it. A gay bodybuilder going <laughs> around and raping and killing women. <laughs> Are you sure he's raping um, women? I, oh, I, I can't imagine why they didn't want to make it. No, but I think it's a movie that should be made. Why? You, know, you, know you want to see this? You know what I think, Why Dave? is this a great idea? Because, you he know what? to see some rape. Dave, we've seen Kevin Smith in, in, in person, right? Yeah. You and, I, you and I have seen him. Where are you going and with he's, this? He's always like, hey, Chris. He's always raping. Or he's me. always like, hey, guys. Or hey, audience. You know what? You should make movies because nobody else will make them if you don't. He was all like... At the at the Tusk premiere, even he was like, "Hey, I made this movie because if I didn't make it, nobody else will." And, and I, I, I think the same thing will happen with this Alfred. Hitchcock I believe, movie. as part of the same speech, he said, "But if your if your movie's like or your thing in life <laughs> is like, go out and kill people, don't do that, <laughs> or don't don't bring misery to the world." No, but I think I think like if you want to make a movie about a a gay bodybuilder that goes out and rapes women and then kills them. That should be something you should do. I didn't mean that, guys. I just got too excited. You should know that what Chris got excited about was a gay bodybuilder. I got excited about a gay bodybuilder. Um, you know what? And this, this. Hey, man, it's understandable. You know, I was feeling a little something. You know what? I think. Well, Betty, you're sitting beside Chris, so I'm hoping you're not feeling a little something. Well, I, I wondered what that was, but... You know what? I think that um, I think that Kevin Smith, uh, Smith has actually inspired me with his speech, uh, oh. say, saying that uh, you should you should go out and make the movie you want. Because so you want to make a movie about a gay bodybuilder. So what I'm going like to do... Sounds like it. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and make this movie. and I'm, I, I think I'm going to start Dave as the <laughs> uh, gay bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> I want no part of this project. <laughs> I am telling you this now. Sorry, no, I, I think, did that. I, I think did. Dave will be that. I, I will not participate. Uh, <laughs> no, but you're you're. Well, the good part about this, Dave, is you're gonna get to rape and kill a lot of women. So this, don't associate is, me with your fucking freak show. This is, this is gonna be a great movie, and uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna make this movie. I'm gonna. I'm gonna film it with my GoPro. Do you need a direct? Uh, do you need a director of photography? I'll uh, happily. Yeah. Do, do you want to? What be is it? Like a, a, a snuff film that. you're making? What's going uh, on? It's, uh, it's not a snuff film. 
<laughs> no, Dave. Just you wait. Maybe it's, in the extras. Dave, it's all going to be acting. It's not going to be real. <laughs> like, um, I know, I know, I know that you're probably horny, but you're not going to really get to have sex with these girls. <laughs> yeah, um, but you are going to get to kill them. It's, it's, so don't worry. Cut, cut him off. Let's move on. You're going to get to fake kill them. Uh, can't cut him off. We're uh, on the air. That's the movie. Deal okay, we're done, with, we're done with Chris. Okay, Chris, Chris. <laughs> we need to move on to Dave's answer. Did you mute him? That's yeah. harsh. <laughs> okay. But very wise. Okay. Uh, Dave? I picked uh, Superman Lives, the, uh, the uh. late 90s Superman project that was going to be directed by Tim Burton, starring Nicolas Cage as Superman. Uh, it was going to be written by Kevin Smith, actually. It was, uh, and he was going to fight Brainiac, and uh, he was going to. There was a, there's like, there's an amazing documentary out there called "The Death of Superman Lives." It was, it's amazing. It was just yeah. released last year, and it's uh, this guy w- went through and he interviewed studio executives, producers, um, uh, Tim Burton himself, uh, as well as Kevin Smith and, uh, and numerous writers who were brought on the project. There's actually photos out there of of um, Nicolas Cage in the costume that. That uh, it's kind of like a built-up um, muscle suit, similar to what Michael Keaton wore as Batman. Sounds sexy, right? <clears throat> um, it was a, a, like it was. Um, you can really follow what this movie would have been and and could have been. Basically, what happened was though Batman and Robin, the movie with George Clooney, <clears throat> came mm-hmm. along. Is that, is, 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 you, do you like the nineteen nine, like the nineteen eighty nine Batman? Yeah, Tim Burton Batman. Yeah. So Tim Burton would have brought that same. Uh, creativity to Superman. I think it made a really dynamic, different kind of Superman movie. But what came along was Batman and Robin with George Clooney. That did terribly. It was not well received. And Warner Brothers basically pulled the plug on the comic book movies that at that movie's point. That amazing. But uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That, like, that movie would have been, if anything, hilarious. It would have been watching Nicolas Cage overact as Superman. And there's some great footage in the documentary which shows uh, Kim in his Clark Kent getup. And it's not like the traditional Clark Kent with, uh, with the button-down suit. He's kind of wearing like a t-shirt with like a like a, a dr- like a kind of an undone dress shirt and like a jacket, like a blazer. And, and, he, and he's got like his uh, his hair like in a ponytail. He's got the glasses on. And he oh, looks yeah. kind of like just kind of like a, a late '90s hipster dweeb kind of guy. And he's like nobody would think that this guy is Superman, right? And he had like a real like take on how the Clark Kent should be and how it should. Um, be done and i just i would if anything if even if the movie had sucked it would have been amazing to see it and to, and to experience that version of superman uh in our lifetime and that's it uh, benny yeah what do you got for us i i i pass on this question if i may in fact i've you know I'd, i think dave's answer is pretty good so like i'll give my i'll give my show a point to him you know what? Yeah. I, I would agree and this one's going to dave <laughs> What? What? You were gonna agree to Dave? Okay, Dave's no, okay. Your movie was a fucking freak show. For the, <laughs> I really enjoyed hearing about it. I must, I must say. <laughs> you agree with Dave or me, Chris? You I can't. Were to, I you, can't. You, but I think we may have been sued Chris, if we had gone with you. I think, I think my mic is turned down too low because I can't. I can't Chris, even hear myself right now. Fiddle with that knob. This is actually the first time we've ever had to mute anyone on this show. What? That should tell you something about your answer. <laughs> what? You had to mute Ooh. me? Yeah. Why? It was you, you you wouldn't stop with your rant. <laughs> like it just went on, raping and killing women. Like it just went on and on. So basically, it was kind of <laughs> twisted and fucked up. Honestly. So basically, Dave senses people on this show. If he doesn't like what you've got to say. Beware. Well, I gonna, absolutely do. I have to hit that button. <laughs> I have to. I have to censor him. Oh For yeah. fuck's sake, of course. Dave, I do. Dave, well, you know he, who he, who qualifies you as the censor? No, no. Dave? Can he you did. turn me up a little bit? <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little bit down right here. <laughs> like uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Now I'm back. Now uh, I'm back. Fuck all you guys. Yeah, you're really definitely <laughs> now back. I'm back. We have one question there remaining. Yeah. Uh, and there right now are. we're tied. Can Chris has it? two points. Dave has two points. Benny has one. And the final question is the wild card. What would be the most interesting natural disaster to witness live? Tornadoes. It's a, it's a real simple answer, and, and it it's, makes a lot of sense logically. Easy um, answer, Dave. Tornadoes are fascinating. They bring up all kinds of debris and matter into the air, into like these kind of uh, elegant uh, cylindrical-shaped uh, wind tunnels, like if you will. Uh, all, think about all the tornado chasers out there. 
All they do, these people, they run around, they're fucking crazy in their trucks and their cars, chasing after tornadoes, trying to get killed. Why? Because they love looking at them. They you, they can't help but look at them. They think they're going to learn something. They, they, pretend, they are crazy people. They, they pretend like they're scientists and they they're, try, they're trying to study people. these things. You ever <laughs> see that movie Twister? Like I did see that movie well, a whole never, bunch of times. never seen With it. Helen Hunt. Yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to throw the balls. And they put all the fucking balls, balls up in, in the there air. and then spin it's it around right. and it's doing That's something. That's a good movie, Dave. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. Chris, love Chris, that movie. you're not helping yourself right Remember now. Remember when the cow went oh, yeah. by? <laughs> okay. Remember when the cow, it was like, murr. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there was like, that cow just came so close to the car and even, that tornado even picked up that cow. Yes. It's fascinating. <laughs> love to watch Fantastic. It. It's a natural disaster. Horrible natural disaster. Destroys homes, kills people every year, but yep. fascinating <laughs> and interesting and fun to watch. Jesus. And Benny. Benny. No, you get to witness this natural disaster live, but you live. Yeah, but can I not go to some like elevated, you know, point of view? You, you want to be in a helicopter? Maybe. Actually, yeah, that would be perfect. <laughs> that could work for you. Okay. Now there's a tornado. All right. Well, if I'm in a helicopter, I'm going to go with a uh, tornado. Like... You can't do it in a helicopter. Yeah. That would suck. <laughs> yeah, you can. Your, your helicopter would just get sucked in. Let him speak. Okay. Let's hear it. What is it? All right. Well, I'm going to go with the real world angle, and I'm going to go with the fucking explosion of Mount Vesuvius and the uh, pre- preservation and ash storm of the people of Pompeii, because you know how fucking people like to bear with me. You know how people like to go around and fucking like witness the fact that there's still people preserved in fucking mutant ash, like molten lava and stuff, like actual physical forms. W- like women hugging their children from fucking thousands and thousands of years ago and you can go fucking see it like it's a museum like imagine uh, witnessing that fucking live them being in that place and that happening i would imagine it was slowly as well it would be pretty fucked up but as far as the spectacle goes you know goddamn that is a natural disaster disaster? with your witnessing it live of does that it's qualify, a, Dave, a, as a It's natural a volcano disaster. eruption. It's, it's a, a natural volcano disaster. Eruption. A All volcano right. eruption right. is what he's picking. If you right. lived there, you'd, you'd find it a disaster. You'd volcano eruption, then. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the movie Pompeii, which shows it in kind of like a modern-day adaptation. I didn't okay, see so that. Was it good? It was uh, the mo- like the stories, whatever, but like it's fun to watch. It's good, good effects. Fair news. Okay, so, Chris, what do you have for us? Okay, so my favorite natural disaster... It's not really your favorite, it's just what you would like to watch, I guess. What I would like to watch is one half of the natural disasters. John Tenta, Earthquake. <laughs> okay? His name is Earthquake. <laughs> his, his, his tag team partner was Typhoon. And they were known as Dude. the natural disasters. <laughs> All right, he wins. They are known as the natural disasters. <laughs> Typhoon so and Earthquake, I, man. Yeah. I picked John Tenta. Do you remember him? Yes. Why not take both? Hurricane of the natural disasters. Because this guy... Would fucking jump around the ring. <laughs> he would fucking. <laughs> Fuck yeah, this is great. He, Keep would going. Fucking, he would fucking jump around the ring. It was so hilarious. He would get he would get his opponents on the floor, okay? He would jump around the ring. And it would jump around. And it would be like causing an earthquake. And then this guy would run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between the ropes. And he would jump on your chest. Balls in your face. <laughs> Ball, balls, <laughs> balls in your face. Earthquake would do this. John Tenta. Hur- hurricane. His name wasn't Hurricane. Earthquake. His name was Earthquake. Hurricane. Earthquake. Earthquake. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Earthquake. His, no. his partner, Typhoon. <laughs> the natural disasters. The earthquake is the best natural disaster <laughs> I'd ever like to witness live. Because that would be an awesome wrestling match. Because that <laughs> fucking guy, he was like 300 pounds. He was, uh, <laughs> he was uh, a Canadian. He was a Canadian. And he's, he was a famous uh, sumo champion. He, he was, and he's dead now. He died in 2006. But he died of bladder cancer. I'm sorry for him. I'm sorry for that. But he is the most sorry, fucking dude. amazing <laughs> natural disaster mute him again. that I would ever like to see. <laughs> because I was going to... Actually, I'm going to tell you, my first choice was to choose the natural disasters. But then I was told I can only choose one natural disaster. <laughs> so I chose, I chose Earthquake over Typhoon because Earthquake is the best natural disaster. <laughs> he used to fucking jump 
When did you ever see him jump <laughs> all around? I, I, okay, I, 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 I know, I know, I know very well who John Tenta, the Earth. Yeah, Dave. Was. Do you know? What, do you know what he's <laughs> preaching right now? Yeah. Come on. Dude, I remember the natural you disaster. Hit they, shit. Were, they were managed by Jimmy Hart. Yes. Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, the, yeah. The, that the was mouth, awesome. The mouth of the South. Um, Jimmy Hart. Mouth of the South with the megaphone. And then he came. He, John Tenta later came back as a member of the Oddities. And yes. The, uh, he wore that. Weird mask, and he had the teddy bear. Anyways, is there any natural disaster you would rather see more than him? Well, that you, would be fucking amazing. You know that. See would, him in the ring. You know that. Would, see him in the ring, man. <laughs> see him in the ring. Balls in your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fucking balls Chris, in your Chris, face. You have, yeah. made, you have made my dad speechless three times. I think yeah. that's a new record. Okay. Uh, I I, uh, I give up. He has it. I'm sorry on this one. This definitely goes to Chris. <laughs> yes, yes. For, if nothing more, the passion and creativity of that <laughs> argument. Such a fucking knob. Balls in your face, Dave. Balls in your what face. What a disaster. What a natural disaster. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why did you guys think of that? The score. score right now is Chris has three, Dave has two, Benny has one, so Benny is done. Sweet. Peace. Um, Music. What is the worst song that you would not want to have sex to? <laughs> There's a lot of those. Um, baby, baby, baby. Oh, Justin shit. Bieber. I choose Justin Bieber, baby, because you know what? I don't want a picture of Justin Bieber in my head when I'm having sex. And I also, I bet you fucking do. <laughs> <laughs> that song is horrible. That's a horrible song. It's got over four fucking like five million YouTube hits because there's like millions of like 13 year old girls that watch it. Seems but very I do, defensive. Do I think? do not want that song going on while I'm having sex. Like, um, baby, baby, baby. I don't want that song going on. It sounds to me like you get it stuck in your head, though. I, I, Does it sometimes get stuck in your head when you're like, you know, in the moment, no. in the in the vibe? Does it sometimes creep in there? No, it doesn't creep. No. But if I was having sex during that song, I would think of Justin Bieber. And it would be horrible. <laughs> it would be the worst experience of my life. That would, would be bad. Would I, you would, I would not even enjoy my sex. I would not enjoy my sex. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be having, I'd be having sex, and I would be like. This is the worst sex I've ever had. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is bad. Oh, bad, 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 bad. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll still come. i probably still come because, you know, and I'm still having sex. But my sex wouldn't be good. I, I concede. I concede. <laughs> You're just giving away a category? I, I have to. I, there's nothing I can say to that. No? No. No, sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Speed round Dave. points? Dave, you gave up? I had to. Like, why? I had nothing. I had nothing. I had nothing <laughs> I could say that would be better than that. <laughs> I just, I was impressed. With Let's the move on to sports. What sport requires the least actual skill to play? I would say um, weightlifting. Right. Why? It's just based on pure muscle mass and what you're able to lift. I don't, like, the technique is important, but it's it's not like rocket science. It's not like crazy hard to do. You hold on to a a, ro- a rod, which has a lot of weight on it. You hold it up for a second, and you, you drop it. Not a lot of skill involved. It's just I, based on you working out and getting your muscles big. I would say um, uh, equestrian dressage. What the fuck's that? <laughs> equestrian dressage is a sport where you – are sitting on top of your horse and you make your friggin' horse dance. You make your horse dance. You make him like uh, pick up his feet and and you you dance around the ring. You dance around the ring. There's no no fucking uh, 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 there's no effort on your part. You're sitting on your friggin' horse. The question dressage. Look it up. Get the fact oh, checker yeah. and look it up. We had we had the question and dressage. Yeah, we've had this before. Uh, yes, yeah. all this, all, no, all no. the riders do is they fucking sit on their horse. I know what it is. And and the the do they the jump horse, or anything? They don't do nothing. They fucking 
they fucking, what do they do? They prance fucking. They fucking prance around. <laughs> they don't What's even that? jump. They don't even jump. Are you sure? That's a question in dressage. That's all they do. It's like it's like this is the my, this is my sport. A question in dressage. My horse like figure and picks up his feet and that's it. And we walk around the ring. So that is my sport with the least friggin' exertion. Like let him look it up. Well, how, it how, is, how, how is it judged, Amy? Let, wait, let, wait. let Amy look it up. You know what? The, the horses don't even do any fucking work. All they do is just they fucking prance around. And like, that is supposed to be a sport. I'd like it's to see it. you dance around like that. And, 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 Tim, it's an Olympic sport, believe it or not. It's actually With no jumping. Strong. With no jumping, they just fucking dance. <laughs> That's all the horses do. And the guy on the horse, like, what does he do? He does nothing. So that's even less exertion than Dave's sport. Dave said weightlifting. Weightlifting is a they lot do, more work. They, they than do. They do. They do jump. They don't jump. Wait, show, wait. show Tim a video. Show Tim a video of a question dressage. Of horses. That is correct. I what? I'm right. On Wikipedia. So what do what do the riders actually do? They do nothing. They, have to they train fucking the horse. sit on the horse. They have, to train the horse. <laughs> they have to train the horse. Have you ever trained a horse before? I've never you trained a horse. You've kicked in the stomach <laughs> many times. Yeah. Well, You'd be dead by now if you trained a horse. A, that's, a, that's a lot less work than weightlifting. Weightlifting, you got to be what? strong. <laughs> you, you actually have to be an athlete. What? It's that. just called equestrian. I don't know where you get the dressage from. <laughs> dressage no, is... called equestrian dressage. See, it is. See, our... Fact checker? Our fact checker checked no, it out. Yeah, that's correct. Well, that's All right, you know what? I'm not getting Seeing it. the fact checker said the jumping is dressage. involved, I have to give this one to Dave. He said a question in dressage does not involve you jump. You may have to censor this part, by the way. Okay. okay he said pause. it does involve jumping. <sighs> okay, next round. He said it involved leaping. But it doesn't involve anything from the rider. Yeah, you have Can to Can you change your decision? You have to train a horse. <laughs> Movies? What movie would you like to be the lead character in that's already been made? Which, who would you like to be? You also spelled character. Well, okay, what's the question? What movie so, would I want movie, to be the main what character movie in? movie that's already been made that has a main character that you would like to be that character? Batman. Wh which Batman? Which Batman movie? Batman and Robin Batman? No, I'll be uh, Dark Knight Batman. What are you, Chris? Your, your choice is Batman? Yes. Tell me why it's a bad choice, Chris. Um, I, I was just looking up the movie that I want to be in. <laughs> <laughs> why do you have to look it up? So, Dave, why would you want to be Batman? Because he's Batman. It's like, <laughs> I'm Batman. It's the answer to anything. You can say, how can you do that? Because, well, because I'm Batman. It's literally the trump card of all trump cards. I'm a millionaire or, or sometimes billionaire in some versions. Oh, um, play, playboy philanthropist who just gets to have a lot of fun all the time, be rich. But also at night I go out and I beat criminals with my fists and I uh, try to, you know, bring justice and order to the city that I love. It seems like a good gig. You know, and I get to fight eccentric criminals who are injured and come up with crazy ways to defeat them. I have a bat utility belt, which gives me the ability to fight all kinds of different things that are thrown at me. I have Morgan Freeman who will make me gadgets. Okay, wait. You said that you were Dark Knight Batman? Yeah. So the whole Playboy thing doesn't really apply to that Batman. Yeah, he doesn't really do the Playboy. He, he does, only does the Playboy as show. Yeah, as show. Yeah. It's, yeah but the, but no, he still does it. It's a lot more dramatic. It does, he, I didn't say he does it because he likes it. He just does it because that's how, you know, that's the so lifestyle. So you're saying he wouldn't enjoy it? I don't think he really does. I think that's just the lifestyle he lives or he wants to portray to the public. Huh. That's the character of Bruce Wayne versus his real persona of Batman. Yeah, what do you got? Uh, you said you said movie that I would like to be the star of, right? Yeah. yeah. It was actually what character do you want to be? Yeah. What character would you want to be? Oh, well, see that changes the whole question. I thought <laughs> that was the question right from the start. Oh, so I thought the question was, what movie would you want to be the lead star of? No, no, he picked Batman because he wants to be Batman. Who do you want to be? Yeah. That's who been do in you a movie? Be? Who do I want to be this being in a movie? Yeah. No, what character do you want to be? Character. I'm going to choose Mike Adriano. What was Who this? the hell is that? Porn star? He is. He is. He is. He is a star of... Uh, maybe he's not a character. <laughs> he's a person. <laughs> he, is, he is a star of many anal POV movies and many uh, blowjob movies. Well, it doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. He is, he is the star. I don't care how many times you guys dick <laughs> suck. He is the star of all these movies. 
Please so please Mike Adriano me. is the character. Batman of would Batman would kick the guy's ass. <laughs> he would probably kick the guy's ass, but he, he, but he wouldn't get his dick sucked so much. Fuck so. <laughs> off! Batman's oh, coming back. Batman. <laughs> um, Batman. Okay, Tim, just it's mine. It's Batman. Fuck off! Uh, no, yeah, it's no, Trump. no, no, no. Um, this, this. Tell me a movie he was in. Come. He okay, was, well, name a movie he was in. He was in Let's Try Anal one through sixteen. He was in all of those movies. <laughs> it doesn't all matter. Those. It doesn't matter. He was in all of those Wait, movies. Wait, they made 16 And of also... Those? Yeah, okay, Eamon. Uh, don't don't he participate. He was in all these movies. Chris, uh, Chris, <laughs> that one just, I'm sorry, went to Dave. <laughs> okay, great. What? Dave definitely wins that category. Why does Dave win that? You win because it. of course I win it. You would rather be in Batman than get your dick sucked? <laughs> Batman did get his dick sucked. I saw the Batman porno. <laughs> That was more than whatever you had. Some guy in a porno once. <laughs> he was in a lot of Of course porno I though. win. What are you talking about? <laughs> Chris, that was probably the easiest decision in the history of trivial debate. It took you like 12 minutes to figure out what we were talking about. <laughs> I was well, like, well, well, I'll do a password. <laughs> okay, next question. <laughs> Who could enter the election and beat Donald Trump for president of the United States? Right now, who could enter? Yeah. Do, they have, obviously have to be eligible to run. Yeah. So like, they have to be American. No, they don't have to be eligible. They could never have been president before. And they can't but be who could run to beat him? Because right now, he's going to win. Well, does it, are, can we count people who are running right now? If you want to. Bernie, oh, wow, Bernie wow. Sanders. Yeah, but could he beat Donald Trump? Yes. Why? He talks about things that are beneficial to his society. He's trying to make America a better country all around. He has a great vision for their land. He's one of the best Americans I have ever seen in my lifetime. He he His values so much reflect my own. If I could vote for Bernie Sanders, I would. And I feel like a lot of Americans um, can really relate with the stuff he's trying to change. He's trying to bring in education that's covered for everybody. He's talking about uh, bringing in a single-payer health care system just like we have here in Canada he wants that in the United States as well finally so people are not dying because they don't have the money to pay for treatment isn't Obama trying to do that Obama is a half measure like Obama cares a half measure you need a full health care system like we have in this country and um and I think that Bernie Sanders has the vision to do all those things. He's against the death penalty, which I'm also against. He's, um, you know, he's uh, he's secular yet religious. Uh, he respects all faiths and your abil- your ability. I res- but I also think you have the freedom to res- practice any religion you want to. I don't think. Well, then why it, do you always have to? Because I think people should be able to freely exchange ideas freely. It doesn't that's it doesn't mean you can't criticize ideas. I, I, that's exactly what they are. Ideas should always be reevaluated and criticized. And uh, and that's what's what I'm about. And that's what Bernie Sanders is about. And I think I think enough Americans would really relate with his message. And I think they do. He has huge rallies, huge. You know, like 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 and young people love him. He really appeals to a younger generation. Whatever. And I'm waiting for the younger generation to take over. Our generation, Tim. Okay, Tim, your question was, who could enter the race now and win Beat the, Donald Trump. Over, beat Donald Trump. Who could enter it now and beat Donald Trump? Bernie Sanders is already... So, he's discounted. I don't it's think a, so. Uh, it's a, so okay, I accepted Dave's answer, so we'll... we'll take so, it. my answer, who could beat Donald Trump? Jim Edelston. Is Captain of the no, friggin- no, he's not. Captain of the LA Mings. I think that Jim Edelston could enter the race and beat Donald Trump because Donald Trump's a fucking asshole and he's a loser. Is that your whole argument? That's my whole argument. I think Jim Edelston can win. Okay, Dave, you just won that one. Thank you. Why? Why did Dave win? It's a terrible argument. Chris, you had no argument. Yeah, you I had an argument. Jim, Jim, Jim wants to vote for Trump. Uh, that's true. <laughs> history. Oh, shit. Here we go. What dictator in history would you like to be the number two to? Is like second in command? Yeah. yeah. Who would you like to be second in command to in world domination and of all world leaders? Napoleon. For Fidel Castro. Dave answered first, so he gets to argue first. 
Napoleon was a badass. He was emperor of France. He conquered most of Europe. Yes, he eventually lost. I think with me as his second command, especially as a person coming from the future, um, I feel like I would have foresight to tell him which battles not to go into um, and which ones he, I would tell him, you were going to lose that battle and that's going to be the turning point of the war. So I, because I come, I'm a future man, of course, who's helping out this historical figure, of course. But what if you don't know? The well, it, it, in that case... If I'm like the same version of me, but I'm a 1700 version of me, I'm still smart. I'm capable. I have transferable skills. I know how to negotiate. And uh, I would definitely be a, um, a reasonable um, asset to Napoleon, even though I don't speak French. Can I speak French in this version? Uh, yes, because you're... Yeah, you have to like, communicate with him. Yeah, so we can speak French. Okay, you're great. French, right? And we, we Yeah, sure. Um, and I'd be... Uh, I'd help Napoleon conquer the world. I'd be number two. i get a lot of benefits from that, and I think I'd be... Uh, that'd be a sweet deal. So, I'd have incentives. Chris? Yeah, my uh, choice is Fidel Castro, and I have a short and sweet answer for you, okay? I... I once I Googled um, who is the guy who had sex with the most women in the world. And the, it, it came up with Fidel Castro. He had sex with uh, like over 3,000 women. He had sex with like three women, women every day for his whole life. So I think if I was number two, I could have sex with like 1,500 women. So uh, that would be awesome for me. So I'm good with that. So Fidel Castro is my number, my, Please my number he one. Win. I'm sorry. That's Chris, the best. I have to give that one to Chris. <laughs> Why? Because that was a really good argument. <laughs> get it. I, was, I just don't get it. Like, honestly, I don't get it. Chris came up with facts <laughs> he spilled a beer again. for his what argument. He, he barely has a fact. Like, what was his argument? Like, I don't get it. He came up with okay. a really good Who argument won? there. Chris won that one. Uh, what's, the, what's the score right okay. now? <clears throat> You're tied right now. TV question decides the winner. This is the final? Yeah. All right. All right. Who is the cheesiest character in a half-hour sitcom? Oh, Steve Urkel. Come on. Man, this guy who's freaking ridiculous. This this guy, uh, you know what? He's actually grown up now. And seeing him now is is uh, it's really a comparison. And it's looking back on, on how ridiculous he was um, at that time. Like, Steve Urkel was just a freaking retard, always going after Laura. Like always wanting the girl, like he he was just a nerd. He's always wanting that. that he's always wearing the the, the the straps. I don't know what they're suspenders. called. Suspenders. Suspenders. He was always wearing that. He is the cheesiest. I'd guy. say uh, Kimmy Gibbler on Full House. Kimmy Gibbler was an obnoxious character, and now that I've seen some promos and some um, spots for Fuller House, the reboot on Netflix of Full House, I she's a character apparently on this show. Have you ever watched the Fuller House? On Netflix, I've seen just the promos and it's I, it's, it's it's really bad. It's I I, it's really I would bad. imagine it is the original sitcom was incredibly bad. <laughs> the entire thing was cheesy, and at the epicenter of it was Kimmy Gibbler. This character was just so like, hey, hello, uh, Taylorinos, and she'd be like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 you know, like she, she was like the and, Steve Urkel of, of Full House. I admit that she was so she was the obnoxious neighbor no one liked, but she was yeah. friends with DJ, I guess, or something. And now, like, they're all grown up, and she's recently... I don't know. It doesn't matter. She sucks. They all suck, but at the, the worst character on Full House is Kimmy Gibbler, and, and, and they, they still bring her back for the reboot, and it makes no sense. No, well, if... Urkel uh, actually know. had some redeeming qualities. You know what? I think... I think um, I if, was a if fan... There, if there was, if there was a, full, a Family Matters reunion, it might actually be okay, but friggin' Steve Urkel was... Just the ultimate fucking nerd, and uh, like he he could never get the girl. He could never even get Laura, who was his friggin' neighbor. Would you know who, who did? Stefan Stefan Arkell did his his uh, chemically altered self or yeah, uh, later well, that was that was a ridiculous episode where he friggin'. I believe that was more than one episode. You know what? It, it was a ma it was it was pretty imaginative. You have to give it that. And Full House did not have imagination. It was completely Full pedantic. House has, Full it, House had so much imagination that it's back on now, isn't it? It's like, I don't understand. John, John I don't Stan understand the nostalgia and... around it. It was a terrible show. <laughs> and But you know what? Family Matters actually had some good moments. Even with Urkel, they had some good moments. There were some oh. heartwarming moments. The Winslows were actually pretty entertaining to watch. Comparatively, between these two shows, uh, you have to give it to... 
I don't know. I think you got to give full it to ha- Steve. Steve Full House is wor- Steve way worse. Urkel for the worst. Uh, Have you yeah. decided, Tim? Anyways, it's up to Tim. Kay. Steve Urkel. First, just give me a second to why is Kimmy Gibbler bad and why is Steve Urkel bad? Steve Urkel is bad. No, no, you argue Kimmy Gibbler, why she's a worse you answer than yours. You know what? Because Kimmy Gibbler is not even in every episode. She's like in like maybe one tenth of all the episodes. Like she's just the neighbor, right? She's not even in the episode. You know, <laughs> Steve Urkel is actually, uh, he's argumentatively, he's a, a main character. He's in there every single day. He's in every episode. Kimmy Gibbler is just, uh, you know, the friend of, of Laura or whatever. And she's meant there. She's meant to be the nerdy friend. What do you want me to do? You want me to tell me why? Why Steve Urkel is a bad answer. Is a bad answer? Yeah. Urkel, like I said, had a lot of moments on that show. Yeah, he was cheesy, but he had a lot of moments where he was uh, really endearing and really like an important character in that show and the fabric of that show. Of course he's very important. He was on every single fucking show. Yeah, like he was really annoying. I, I I get you. Like he was he was he was extremely irritating. Even if you liked the show, you kind of liked him, which I kind of did at the time. And um, I was just like, but there were moments where like you know like him and Carl would hug and there'd be like, da da da, you know, days gone by. That's because he was on every show, and they have to make him. Like likable sometimes, or else you wouldn't keep watching the show. Well, he was he was he was kept there. Kimmy Gibbler was like he not was on every show. She wasn't the main character in the show. No, she was. She was. She was, she was terrible. She was terrible. She was just. Uh, this is what she. She was like just now. like if there was a hundred full house episodes, she was on maybe ten. No, I mean, it's not. It's not like it was she was way there. more than that. It's not like the, she was there every time. Okay, fact, Steve check, Urkel, fact check that. Steve Urkel was there every single fucking time, and he was always just as fucking annoying as he is. And he's still fucking annoying today. No, you, you know what you mean? J- Jaleel White, is that his name? Jaleel White, yes. Yeah, he was pretty good, you know? He was a good actor. Yeah, I he, was he was a good actor. Good actor. He, he did the best with it he could. It was extreme. He, he did the best that he could <laughs> at pay, playing the normal. The character was exceptionally popular. With The like, character was popular. And you know what? J- Jaleel White is not actually uh, a geeky or stupid guy in person, but he played that geeky in character character so good kimmy gibbler was actually that character in real life so my character is actually acting his epi- his stuff so well my character is acting so well benny. your character is just being your character just Be- being your benny just do, being your person do you have an and, opinion and, and that's why only being on 10 episodes and not being on every episode i'm sorry at the end of this based purely on argument there chris's biggest argument is she wasn't on very many episodes but it's not how many episodes they were on it's how cheesy they were and dave argued how steve urkel is so much better and he had endearing moments so dave gets the win (laughs) chris won the regular round three to two against dave and dave won the speed round four to two against chris so what's that mean so dave Dave wins wins by one Ah! Benny, come back. You have to help me celebrate my win. Hey, Chris, you won the regular round. No, you won the regular round. Guys, we have to sign off the show. We have to sign off the show. Oh, how do you sign off the show? We're not done yet. We have to say goodbye. Like This is a show. We've been with The listeners have been with us for like 90 minutes now. You have to give them something. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Jesus. Everybody is drunk. And so is Dave. And so is Tim. And so is Chris. I think Chris is the drunkest of all. Damn it, I didn't win. But you were really close. I think this is the closest you've ever been. You were leading for a while. Yeah, you were in first. You led I the... I should have won. Uh, maybe, I, I had all the best answers. Maybe one less beer. I think you would have won. But I, I, I mounted an incredible comeback. You have to admit it. Yeah. Uh, yeah Chris, you could have won that final round. From Trivial Debates, we are. But you spent too much time arguing about how Kimmy wasn't on enough episodes. That was your whole <laughs> argument against <laughs> Kimmy. But yeah, it wasn't no. about Tim didn't have a choice but to give it to me, really. The but the argument is. wasn't who's the cheesiest or who's the cheesiest character on every episode. Do you agree, Benny? Fuck, man. 
I'm really sorry, but I just I find it so fucking really hilarious when you argue with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm so sorry. We're going to sign off. <laughs> that, that, All right, that. everybody. This is Trevor the Bates saying good night. I'm Dave Mater. I'm oh. Chris Seymour. Bye. Yeah. We'll see you on the flip side. Oh. On the flippity floppity floppity flu. <laughs>